guys how are you doing today <laughs> so this is christelle uh tricot and stitch uh i think almost everywhere on the internet uh thank you very much for joining me today for episode 18 of my inspirations podcast so this is a podcast about knitting and yarn dyeing um i'm so grateful if you are a returning viewer thank you so much for being with me today again and if you're new here, welcome, and I hope uh, you will uh, enjoy this episode and uh, do, you, you, know, you don't have to catch up on anything, uh, you just can uh, sit with us today, grab something to, to drink. I have a lot of things to share today with you, and again, I am so very happy to be with you today again. So uh all basics the basic stuff uh, uh, to get this out of the way um, first you have the notes of the episode uh if you click on plus just below you'll get all the useful links to uh, the newsletter to the etsy shop to um, everything where i'm at um, if you wish to stay in touch with me the best way to do so is first the newsletter uh, please sus subscribe uh, because it's the only way to make sure you're not missing anything Trico Stitch uh, because the second way is to subscribe on Instagram I uh, post there a lot I'm a lot there uh, but uh, you, you know with the algorithm and everything you cannot be sure you will see everything I post okay so that's for the basics um, I wanted to tell you that in the show notes you will get all the links of the things I'm talking about in the episode. Um, also, I wanted to thank you again for uh, using the Tricot Stitch hashtag on Instagram to share your creation and realizations. Thank you so much. It makes my day every time when I, uh, you know, I look at it daily and uh, I share in my stories uh, the things you share with the Tricot Stitch hashtag. And uh, thank you so much. I just want to encourage you to continue and uh, to keep using it. Also, if you like this video, don't hesitate to put a thumb up and to subscribe to the channel. Uh, it's very important for the life of the podcast and uh, it's a great way to support the podcast if you like it and if you love it. <laughs> and don't hesitate to drop a comment as well. Um, I'm there almost every day as well. Uh, I brought the comments. There is not much comments on the English version because while well, the podcast is not very old, um, but I do have a lot of comments on the French version. So don't hesitate to comment in, uh, in English here. Okay, so uh, on the menu today, a lot of things. I thought that, you know, uh, having a, a weekly podcast i would maybe have to be shorter on the episodes because yeah less content uh, compared to a uh, b-monthly podcast for example but boy do i have things to share with you today <laughs> today is not the case i think we will be close to the hour mark uh, maybe a bit less but uh, yeah i have a lot of things to share with you today uh, the first thing I wanted to share with you is my slip extravaganza. <laughs> mm. How are we going to start our weekly episodes when this is done? I mean, it's just the highlight of the episode, no? <laughs> so if you don't want to be spoiled, again, just avert your eyes because I'm going to show you the uh, latest Mystery Card by Stephen West knitted in my yarns. So. Are you ready? <laughs> so I've just, I've completed um, section four and five. So that's clue three. And I've started on clue four. That's section six. So here you go. It's, it's getting very, very big. And I'm aiming to need the bigger version, the larger version. So, I mean, I, I definitely can change my mind uh, if it's too much but for the timing the plan is to go for the large border okay so here is uh, section four uh, it's lovely uh, the main color variegated color is my crazy witch colorway and uh, contrast color is darker things 
and there you have section five the little triangles and it's the colorway is gloria gloria um so this is section five the little triangles and you see i've started to knit section six it's the gutter gutter stripes chevrons and you need for that section well that section you will need each row is approximately it's 900 plus stitches per row and 54 stitch markers so i have a thing for stitch markers i collect them and i used all my halloween and fall themed stitch markers for that <laughs> that uh, part of the shawl i even had to you know go uh, to the tea high tea themed stitch markers for that one <laughs> i'm a kind of a stitch marker weirdo i have stitch, mar stitch markers for almost every occasion i have and i have some in the shop as well uh, not as much as i used to but not as many as i used to but still i love stitch markers in the shop so some are mine some are that i bought along you know the years uh, from different uh yarn dyers and stitch marker makers so i think that one might be my favorite oh please do the focus please focus okay so you have a little cauldron here it's really cute and a little witch broom and it's really the theme because you have some pumpkins pine cones what do you have here an owl well, you get the picture. <laughs> Everything pumpkin and Halloween and uh, and fall. So, I even had some ventures in Fimo paste a little while ago. So yeah, there is some the occasional pumpkin and uh, chestnut and. Uh <laughs> okay, so it's really making a really lovely noise when you hear it. <laughs> and uh, well, each row is incredibly long. Well. The beast of rows was section five, really, with, with all the triangles. Wow, that thing here, that row, all the, it was knitted in one row. And you had to break yarn for each triangle. So each triangle that was two ends to weave in. And I'm a bit <laughs> weaving ends weirdo as well i don't do the method uh stephen west is recommending uh is recommending the weaving stephen method i don't like that because i to me it's not really uh neat and i always you know i'm always uh, anxious of, of my ends uh going loose especially when you use super wash yarn so i don't do that i weave i weave uh, my end this manually with the darning needle following the yarn and it's a bit time consuming but yeah i prefer do, doing that that way so i had all my ends weaved in uh prior to start uh, the next clue so well done well done myself <laughs> But what a beast of a row. That row was never ending. I think I knitted that row over three days. I had to split four days. I split it. I had to knit six triangles. My yeah, my goal for each day was knit six triangles and weave in 20 ends. <laughs> and I did it. Okay, so I don't think I will be done with that shawl by next by the next episode because I mean it's huge I've just seen someone posting like 12 rows 10 hours okay I think I'll, I'll try to knit uh, two rows per day and there are 48 rows and then there is the massive icon bind off so that's 48 24 uh, maybe by end of November I will be done <laughs> But not before because I do have a lot of things to work on as well as part of Stricwestish 
ongoing pipelines of patterns so yeah so yeah do not expect this to be finished by the next podcast it's not going to happen <laughs> definitely not okay so <clears throat> i wanted to thank you so much because i dyed a bunch of kits for this mystery call i had over 30 kits in the shop and do you know how many i have left only three so thank you so so much so much i wanted to show them to you because they are lovely <laughs> so there is the kit sortilege uh, which is the french for spell and so you have this uh, very slightly speckled colorway very uh, it's called nude that colorway a little bit of speckles uh, with um, three semi-solids this one is pickled a bit as well so it's nude with ivy confetti framboise sous acide and halo a gorgeous combination of color then you have something really fall inspired which is sangria here with cute foxy sous bois and molten gold and I think that one would yield a beautiful beautiful one I had used this as color con con contrasting color two and one and three and I would need the first clue using those two contrasting colors and the last one is using my single base and it's very romantic and it's nutmeg uh, with three different shades of mauve so that's deep purple modu and lilac lane for those of you who like to read Agatha Raisin, <laughs> that's the street she lives on uh, in the Cotswolds. So that's all that's left, guys. That's so awesome. Thank you so much. So much. Thank you. So um, another thing I wanted to tell you about Slip Saraganza, my main color, very variegated color here is Crazy Witch. And there will be a restock of Crazy Witch in the shop on Monday. So today for you, if you're watching this on Monday, uh, on Monday, November the 2nd. I'm recording this episode on, Mon on Sunday, November the 1st. Well, thank you so much again for... Uh, because I, I, I dyed a bunch of Crazy, Wicks la Crazy Witches last week. And I mean, everything sold out so quickly, so... <sighs> Thank you so much. I just wanted to tell you that if you wish to buy some Crazy Witch, there will be some for you. As long as you guys want some Crazy Witch, I will be dying some Crazy Witch for you. And if you, there will be some on Monday. There, was, there will be also an exceptional uh, shop update on Friday. Uh, but I will try to sneak in some Crazy Witch in every dye session, dyeing session. So. This time around, this is the basis on which I dyed Crazy Witch. There are three bases, but I'm showing you four skins because, first of all, the uh, Extra Fin Fingering base. That's my basic but gorgeous sock base. Uh, sock and whatever you wish. You can, you know, you can use it for all the projects you want. The two batches came out quite differently. I have one batch that is lighter less saturated and what one batch that it's more saturated so they will be sold separately batch one batch two uh, this is the lighter of all the skins that came at light and this is pretty consistent for the other batch so you have crazy witch light and crazy witch for my shawl uh, i'd say that the batch i used for this was in between here not completely saturated but uh, less pastel as well but i i like actually the uh, lighter one i prefer the most saturated i'd say but i really love the more pastely colors of this one as well um i dyed it on stellina as well so stellina takes the dye uh, pretty well so all the skins are pretty saturated on Stellina. 
and I dyed something really wonderful I wanted to share with you guys. I tried dyeing Crazy Witch on my Silk Kid Fluff. I never remember the name. Kid Silk Fluff, I think. Uh, and it's, I think, the most beautiful thing I ever dyed. Please focus. Yep. Okay. So, to start with, that base is really beautiful. It's like it glows, but on a variegated colorway like this, I mean, it's gorgeous. So there will be five in the shop like this, and I have some uh, kid silk fluff uh, left in my bases, so I can dye to order very easily. So that's for Crazy Witch. <laughs> I hope you like it. I mean, the one on, on silk, kid silk fluff is absolutely gorgeous. I am, I want to keep one for myself, but I mean, if it stays in the shop, it will get, if it's still in the shop by the end of the week, clearly I will take it for me. But you know, I can die more, so it's for you guys. Um, then if you've been following me for a while, I think I've shared with you before that I really like to be sent on a mission by my customers and I wanted to show you a couple of missions I've been working on lately uh, of which I'm, I'm very proud of and I want to share with you what kind of mission I can take on you know <laughs> if you fancy sending me on a mission as well so here you go first that's basically the uh, dyed to order uh, listings and the personalized because it's not just dyed to order it's also like if you want something you you know just get in touch and we can try and dye whatever you want so the first uh, thing I'm really happy about is this uh, Westfjord Wonder Wanderer textured kit. So that's the uh, only diet to order on the shop. Um, it's a beautiful kit of seven different bases uh, to, you know, explore the Westfjord Wanderer pattern by Stephen West, not only with colors, but also with textures. So it's a really fun kit to order. And you know what? It's free shipping for this worldwide uh, so this are uh, these are all the bases you have Syrian silk and it goes from grayish mauve to coppery mauve I'd say so that customer wanted the same kit as mine so it's not the same as completely the same as mine because I mean the dye process is completely artistic and it's a spur of the moment and uh, I mean, I write down all the colors that I use to uh, dye that specific colorway, but that's it, just the colors. And it's really, you know, I, I it's, it's a feeling thing. It's not really um, something that is completely uh, traced and uh, for which I have quantities and everything. It's more like I'm painting the yarn and uh, yeah. So it's completely unique. So that's Suri and Silk. Then I dyed uh, Kid Silk Fluff. And you will see there is a progression of color. Um, then I have the Merkid, Merinos and Moer base. Always fingering base. Then I have the Stellina. And I'm going to put that here. Okay, uh, next is, um, if I'm not mistaken, more in sock, like this. Then I have the slub yarn. And the last one is Moer, um, no, Merinos, Yak and Sock. <laughs> and there you go. Oh, I got, I'm not going to. So here the complete lineup. I don't know if you can see the colors properly, but I will put some pictures. Uh, yeah. So this is the kit. Once it's, it's dyed to order, it's a gorgeous one. 
I'm really happy with how it turned out. I hope my customers will be as well. <laughs> yeah, here you go. So, yeah, free shipping over for orders over 150 euros. So for this one, you are in the free shipping zone. Uh, next uh, die to order was a, uh, a kit for a pattern of mine, which is called Brioche Queen. It's a call that comes with a digital workshop. And it's a call using uh, one strand of slub with one strand of mo moire and silk for the darker color and one strand of fingering white for the lighter color. And that customer wanted a, yeah, a custom Brioche Queen kit. So for the light color, she chose uh, a very beautiful pale gray on uh, the Lurex base. And I created a colorway specifically for her, uh, which is uh, different shades of blue on Merino's Yak and Silk and uh, a, a blue semi-solid on uh, Surian Silk. And I think it's going to be beautiful. So I'm not really a blue person, but I like the color, but it's really not my go-to color at all. But when I dye some, I'm really happy with the results. So I dyed more of those two and those two will be in the shop as well. So on Merino Siak and Silk here and on Syrian Silk. And I did a few uh, fun experiences. For example, I dyed uh, this is grey to start with, so I dyed together with this a uh, white skin of yarn so that you can see uh, the colorway, how it looks on a white background. So that colorway doesn't have a name yet, but it will, it will have soon. And I written down the, I've written down the recipe, so it will be uh, reproducible. And then I dyed also together with the Suri, which takes the yarn, the dye very differently from a fingering white yarn, for example. This is what it looks like when it's dyed here on Stellina. So you see it's pretty intense, lovely shade of, of blue. So this is reproducible as well. And again, no name yet because I've not tagged them and uh, I don't know why. It's something that can come with the act of tagging the yarn. Uh, if I'm looking for a name uh, from the top of my mind, I uh, it's blank. And when I'm tagging them and it's I have to name them, that's when the inspiration strikes and I come up with names. So no name yet, but there will be soon. Uh, so it kind of led me in nine uh, in nine, uh, an exploration of of blue this uh, custom order and it was really cool. Um, another custom order I wanted to show you, which is quite simple but very gorgeous. I wanted to you know ch share the gorgeousness with you, is my Halo colorway dyed on Merino's yak and silk, and I just wanted to share with you the absolute gorgeousness of that colorway and this base combined. It's absolutely beautiful. And another mission I was sent on was, you know, I have a customer that bought that skin of yarn, which is a one of a kind colorway called Chimera. And you see the shades, intense purple, uh, berry, like raspberry, and she wanted to extract some of the colors in that variegated um, skin to have a kit uh, like a gradient kit. So she wanted some deep purple, some berry colored and just the one in between like here. And this is what I came up with. So I think it's pretty cool. I'm very happy with the results. So this is the berry one. Then you have the very intense one and the in-between. It works well, right? I'm quite snug about this one. <laughs> I won't lie, I, it got me thinking, like 
because that was a one of a kind. I did not have any written notes about that, so that was the main difficulty. And then I didn't want to dye in, uh, because I dye in very small batches, but I didn't want to have like four like this, four like this. I d really wanted to dye only for that person. And so I had to think on about how I could re reproduce uh, something very coherent in terms of colors. And I did it. I'm super happy. <laughs> okay, the last uh, custom order I was asked about, and I, this will be the smoothest of transition, uh, is a customer requested a, a kit for that pattern, the Stillness by Helen Stewart. Because when uh, this, it was Helen Stewart curious and made uh, latest mystery car and I put up a lot of kits for that pattern in the shop when it went out and I participated and so a customer requested a a kit for the stillness with Hebrides, Sweetie and Snow All and uh, several other customers wanted to have a second round of uh, kits for this shawl and so that's what I did. So those kits won't be in the shop on Monday, it will be in the shop on, on Friday because uh, this week is very special. I have a festival, an online festival to which I'm participating at the, as a vendor on the weekend and so there will be a shop update just before the weekend to have lots of cool things in the shop as well. So I just wanted to share with you the color palette for the upcoming uh, stillness kits that will be in the shop. They will hit the shop on Friday. I've been busy dyeing uh, for those in the last couple of session of dyeing session. And this is the palette. So you will get some nutmeg, chocolate fudge, verdigris, snow all, Molten Gold, that's cute foxy that is more leaning towards rust than grey this time around. Uh, that's Jean Fetish, Sweetie, Hebrides, Hallo, Fury and Ecos. So all those colors won't be uh, available as individual shades in the shop on Friday but rather I'm going to put together some different kits for the stillness mystery car, uh, for the stillness show now. It's not a mystery car anymore. So if you want to have a look at what I'm going to offer, one example could be that one, that's Verde Gris, Chocolate Fudge and Nutmeg, for example. Another one that you guys loved when I put together them, some kits, some other kits for another show, that one was a huge success. It was uh, chocolate fudge with hello and sweet tea. Um, another one could be, well, the, the first one you saw with uh, Hebrides, sweet tea and, um, and snow all. Uh, I think also that snow all, verdigris and Cute Foxy make a lovely, lovely trio. Um, well, you see, I'm going to, you know, work with those uh, with those colors and uh, and propose some some kits. Uh, I think that one is pretty, pretty lovely as well. It's Ecos with Hebrides and Sweetie. It works very well. The three of them. So you get the idea. I'm going to, you know, I dyed uh, each color in uh, three or five uh, skins, in batch of three or five, or five skins. And I'm going to put uh, some kits. Well, you have Jean Fetish, that works very well with Verdegris as well. And Snow O for something a bit more uh, mineral, less warm. Less warm because I'm pretty much into full colorways and that's my interpretation of the color palette for that pattern. I mean, you could always 
go in the shop and grab other colors. I have some very bright colors uh, in the shop as well. I have some fluorescent uh, pink. I have some some uh, very intense purple. I, I have s lots of different colors in the shop, but my personal interpretation of the color palette for uh, that specific pattern is what I've just shown you basically. <laughs> Okay, so that's what the, the kits will uh, look like on Friday. So, why Friday? Well, usually I'm, I work with uh, one shop update a week that goes together hand in hand with the, pat with the um, podcast and uh, the newsletter. But next uh, weekend, I'm going to participate as a vendor in the Barcelona Knits 2020 festival uh, which is online uh, because of the sanitary crisis and uh, I mean the organizers have done things that will be awesome I can't wait for you to to see them uh, I prepared some video elements for that uh, festival I have a specific shop update for the festival I have a, a coupon code for you guys to use during the weekend over the weekend so that's November 7 and 8 uh, so that's next weekend and you will get uh, a 10% coupon code to use in the shop so everything in the shop will be eligible for the coupon code with the exception of uh, pre-orders or custom orders those won't be uh, discounted but everything that's ready to, to go, the kits, everything uh, is 10% uh, discounted, 10% off. And the code will be available in the uh, Ravelry uh, shop as well. So if you had your eyes on a pattern, I was talking about Brioche Queen uh, just before, it will be available for uh, the, uh, the discount. So, and I also have something exclusive that I uh, prepared ex especially for uh, the Barcelona Nits Festival and I'm going to share that with you right now. So, it's, uh, I have four kits, very luxurious kits of a new base that's baby yak and silk, 50% baby yak and 50% silk in the shop, dyed in one of a kind colorways, non reproducible, and it's kits for four skins of yarn, uh, and it's uh, 200 meters for per 50 gram skins, so you have uh, 800 meters in one kit. So, this is especially uh, dyed for uh, the Barcelona Nits Festival. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous base, very soft, very shiny. Uh, it's incredibly luxurious. I, 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 I cannot. <laughs> I've knitted that with that myself. I've started designing a, a, a shawl pattern with that, and it's a dream to work with. And I have only one in that colorway. The colorway is Balt. And I have three in a more variegated colorway called Wonderland. So it's like a rainbow, but muted rainbow, full, full like full inspired, full themed rainbow. You have some greens, some um, gold, you have some mauve, a bit of speckles, a bit of, you know, parts where the dye met up and created some lovely, lovely neutral shades. Uh, those are really, really special and I wanted uh, those to be in the shop for that festival because they're quite pricey, I won't lie. Uh, one skin is 18 euros and that's only 50 gram. But I think that's the perfect occasion for you to get a splurge because you have, there is a little, just a, a tiny discount of the price of four skins together and there is the minus 10% with the uh, promotional code for the weekend. So 
okay? And uh, I just wanted to, wanted to remind you that uh, shipping fees have been uh, lowered in the shop. Uh, if you're buying from Europe, it starts at 9.9 .9 euros, so 9 euros 90, with increments of 1 euro when you add two um, articles to your, your cart. And for the rest of the world, outside Europe, it's 19.90, and then increments of your 1 euros. So, uh, and there's free shipping for orders, again, over 150 euros. And so you might ask yourself, what can I knit with that? Well, it's 800 meters of fingering weight yarn. And I have a kind of an artistic approach to yarn. For me, it's like a medium, like paint would be to a painter. So I usually don't pair, um, I don't buy yarn with a specific pattern in mind. I just, you know, go with the uh, the crush I have on the on the medium, and then start from here. And I thought that, for example, this paired with uh, some gorgeous mohair I have in the shop in the in the Lichen colorway would make a gorgeous project. You you see, for a variegated colorway, if you are concerned about how the co colors are going to play together, because they are quite opposite on the uh, color spectrum, so on the color wheel, you might you know think, how are they going to play together? Well, basically, because of the optical blend that's going to happen, you will have from afar something close to a neutral color, with tiny specks of you know colors. Uh, and if you want to um, maximize the optical blending thing, you can pair it with a neutral shade of moire and sock, which will kind of make a background, unified background, on which you will get some color speckles uh, shining out. So, yeah, that's how I approach things. I like to, you know, I really don't have an approach to knitting that's, you know, just I want to knit that object or that accessory or that garment and then use it and that's the motivation. My motivation starts with the yarn. I love that yarn. I love that color and I want to have it in my hands and work with it and create something beautiful with it and cherry on the cake, I will get to use it as well. <laughs> that's the you know, other way around. So that's my approach when I offer you some kits in the shop with no attached pattern, or that's just medium, really. The textured kits, for example, or the uh, those kind of kits are really for you to uh, go on your own creative path and enjoy yourself and, and, and work with something beautiful that inspires you to create something beautiful. That was my rant about creative creativity uh, in knitting. Also, uh, what I wanted to tell you is that there is uh, something happening this month for the first time ever. There is my it's the start of my monthly knit along. Um, there will be one new a new knit along each month. Well, it's like a permanent knit along with monthly prizes. So to participate this month, so that's, the name is Tricot Stitch FO Fun Fair. So if you want to play along, what you have to do is use the dedicated hashtag here. That's Tricot Stitch FO Fun Fair 2020. And you can use it uh, on Instagram. You can play on Instagram. Don't forget to tag Tricot Stitch as well, alone. And you can play along also on Ravelry in the dedica dedicated uh, discussion thread. Uh, just post a picture uh, on either platform with a tricot stitch yarn, tricot stitch pattern, or both uh, that you are working on at the moment. And uh, at the end of the month, like no, beginning of next month, uh, I will draw two winners because there are two prizes this month. So. These are the two prizes, baby and yak <laughs> skins. 
So it's for you to test. If you're curious about the base, I don't know if I will have some regular in the shop because like I said, it's really pricey, but it's such, it's such a treat and it's gorgeous to work with and it takes the color beautifully. So I will draw two winners uh, this month. One will uh, win one skin of Baby Yak and Silk in the bald colorway and the other one will win a, yeah, uh, a skin of uh, Baby Yak and Silk in the Wonderland colorway. So that you, so, so that you can test <laughs> if you like that base or if you want to buy more. Or if, you're if you're just curious. So you just have to, you know, and, and when you post something knitted in tricot stitch using a tricot stitch pattern, it's twice, uh, it's like you posted two, two entries. So twice as more chances to win. Okay, so um, what else did I want to tell you? Oh, there is something I forgot to tell you at the beginning of the episode. So sorry about that. I'm coming back to my Crazy Witch colorway. That colorway uh, uploaded, I think, if everything goes according to plan, um, uploaded together with uh, this podcast episode, there will be a short video of how I die uh, cra uh, Crazy Witch. So if you're curious about the process, uh, yeah, you will see me, you know, dyeing that colorway. Uh, I've not, uh, I, I've shooted the, the video, but I've not uh, edited, yet, edited it yet. But if everything again goes according to plan, it should be uh, on YouTube uh, together with this podcast. Okay, that's it, I'm done. And the last, Thing I wanted to cover with you. <laughs> I wanted to show you um, the first shawl that I knitted. It's like, you know, <laughs> it's like a throwback thing. I wanted just to share with you some projects that I've knitted over the years. And this is maybe to give you some inspiration to knit your own. Um, this is the Tordis or Thordis shawl. It's an Icelandic shawl. I just wanted to share it with you because it's beautiful. <laughs> and I think I mentioned it in my uh, episode last week. I'm not sure, but I definitely did in the French podcast. Maybe I didn't in the English one, but anyway, here it is. So this is my first lace, lace shawl ever. It's the Tordis shawl. Uh, you will get the link in the in the show notes and I just wanted to share with you share it with you it's already eight years old I knitted that in 2012 in the summer and it was a gorgeous knit uh, you start this is the cast on edge here and you go uh, by uh, you you knit the shawl by decreasing it, it every other row and uh, until you don't have any stitches left and then you pick up stitches and you knit the border. And what's funny about that one is that you have some parts that are like this. You see, it's reversed stockinette stitch, but the border is in stockinette stitch. And again, on the other side, this is stockinette stitch and reverse stockinette stitch. And that's because I think it's a tradition in Iceland so that you don't have to worry if it's on the wrong or right side. You can wear it both way. Uh, there is no wrong side. <laughs> so that's pretty, pretty awesome. Um, I wanted to show you the book in which I, uh, well, when I knitted that in 2012, it was a free pattern, but I believe it's not a free pattern anymore. But you can find it on Ravelry or in that book uh, don't ask me to pronounce this. I don't know. Uh, I at least not correctly. It's by Segredur Aldos do Tir and it's Prignur Oglengsholm. Okay, well, it's Icelandic. But I think it comes with a translation. In French, it comes with a translation that's done by a, by a French knitter with Icelandic origins. She's called Ellen McNixon and she, yeah, she did a little translation of the, of the, of the book. 
and it's a gorgeous book with lots of beautiful traditional patterns. Well, the title means in English uh, traditional Icelandic shawls. And yeah, my Tordis shawl is here. Here it is. And in the book, you have all those, all those shawls. It's really a great book. If you're a lace knitter and you enjoy lace, lace knitting uh, and you want to experience some, you know, uh, Icelandic lace knitting traditions, it's a great book. Uh, one shawl I've wanted to knit for a long time but never got around to was... that one gorgeous lace shawl in one color and for that uh, shawl I used Icelandic yarn it's Einbound um, it's a great choice because it goes very well with the traditional aspect of the of the pattern but I won't lie it scratches like a lot even after washing it and anything I could do I to, to well I'm not too sensitive but yeah I mean it's it scratches a bit okay and the last book I wanted to share with you it's it came in like yesterday and I was so excited because I love Otlinda I'm a huge fan of the first the books uh, I've read the books I mean several times uh, the real books the audiobooks and then there was the Netflix show, Netflix show and I was happy about it and I'm a huge fan of Outlander and it's true that in the show one thing that strikes you most in, is the use of, of knitting and uh, the book says it very well there was a flurry of knitting patterns inspired by Outlander and Ravelry when the show first came out on Netflix and then there is this official Outlander knitting book and the patterns are so good. I mean, gorgeous patterns, starting with that one. I have been wanting to knit that one for a while now. I love it. That, a cool, a little caplet here. And everything is uh, paired when you live through the book. You have the actual, you know, uh, pictures from the show because from for some uh, other books uh, knitting books inspired by other very famous movies you don't have the actual uh, it's a question of rights clearly but they don't have the rights to use uh, the actual images from photos and pictures and images from the movie but here they do have the rights so you get to see Claire you get to see Jamie I mean, it's gorgeous, and you get to, to have lots of information about uh, about the um, the cast and uh, the knitting and the clothes. I mean, it's not just a pattern, a, a book for patterns. It's really a book for the lovers of the mo of the show as well and the books. So here you go gorgeous pictures and so there is one project that i wore love them gorgeous pictures um there is one pattern i want just to cast on like immediately not that one not that one just you know eye candy <laughs> Smell that one. Uh, the one I want to just like cast on immediately is that one. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I love the socks and the inspiration. So they are the Dune socks, and the inspiration was Claire's bodice, Lattice bodice, and for I, I wanted to you know knit the socks with a, um, a yarn with some 
woolly woolly feel to it so I had this test dye that I did a few months ago uh, on BFL and it's a uh, colorway that is very complicated for me to reproduce it's a uh, it's a uh, a mix between red and green so that's vert de gris and I I mean that first time I dyed it as a you know just an experiment I never got around to have exactly the same result never <laughs> so that one is a very cherished skin of mine <laughs> and I'm going to use it to knit that pair of socks so I think it's a perfect match and I think I'm going to uh, propose BFL in the shop like in November I'm going to buy some so this is my complete and utter crush book and knitting outlander I'm going to cast on today I think I know I know I have to work on my slip dragons I know but you know I just want to cast on knit a few rows you know just to experience the outlander feeling so yeah and that's it for today and we're close to the hour mark you see so yeah a weekly episode doesn't mean like less content <laughs> not in my world um what did i want to tell you yeah uh, the past couple of weeks the kids were around because it was the uh, you know we have we have in France two weeks of vacation every six weeks of school six to eight weeks of school we have two weeks vacation so that was the uh, well today marks the last day of uh, the first vacation period so the kids were with me all the time not the four kids only the three uh, older ones because my baby was in daycare uh, four days a week but it was a bit complicated to have the kids around and usually october is a very busy period for me so i didn't i I hadn't planned on having any uh, time off really so I did manage to uh, arrange my working schedule to make time to be with them and you know carve some pumpkins and uh, and do things with them uh, especially on the weekends uh, the rest of the day are uh, they are they are quite old uh, I mean they can take care of themselves and I mean I'm always uh, with them because I work from home but uh, they were quite doing their own things uh, most of the time so yeah it was was cool but it was not very easy either uh, because um, it's difficult to you know have some headspace I mean I had some time to do things but I didn't have a lot of time to concentrate and uh, yeah headspace so in France, we had the news on Friday that we are going in lockdown again. But uh, kids are going to school, uh, so not much change here. And uh, I definitely, well, you won't change anything for Tricot Stitch. So same schedule, same uh, shop update, rhythm. I mean, everything will stay the same. Uh, it's just that we can go out as a, as a family so we'll have to adapt I mean finger crossed that this uh, yields results soon and everything goes in the right direction after that <laughs> sending you lots of love uh, have a last and have a lovely week uh, see you on next episode that should be next week okay and uh, don't don't forget to shop update this week on Monday and on Friday okay see you guys bye bye